The Colonel Podcast. Hosted by Noah Norton. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Colonel News Podcast. As always, your uh, source for reliable entertainment, movie, and news. Um, I'm your host, for now, um, Noah Norton. And, uh, sorry, I'm f- sorry if I'm a little bummed out today. Uh, I, uh, after I film this episode, um, I have a meeting, uh, with, with the Colonel Collective, and essentially they're going to be voting on, uh, whether or not the show adds a co-host. Um, I don't know why they're doing this. I've, I've. I've thought the sh- the direction that we're going and and what we've been doing so far has been so great, but um, I guess they are just worried about with my hot takes that I have uh, that th- there will be an inevitable canceling, and they kind of see this as like an insurance policy. Um, but I I I just don't get it, you know, because everything's been going so well. Um, and, and, and it's just so unfair to you guys that you might have to have another person delivering you this reliable entertainment movie news. Like, I, I, I think I, I've always thought of the fans first when it came to doing this. You know, that's why I got into this, uh, to, to be admired by thousands of people. Um, but, you know, it it sounds like now I have to share that maybe, you know? So what I would ask from my loyal fans uh, comment down below, you know, like, comment, and just share your displeasure at the idea of anyone else being involved in this production, okay? I think that would be the best thing we can do to stop this vote from happening, stop the, the, the even the thought that there could be another person delivering this news to you. It's just so unfair. But, um... Uh, I'm going to try not to let it get to me, okay? Uh, because I know that action is being taken to prevent this. You know, I, I know that's happening. So as as long as my fans, uh, and like you, stand by me, then we're going to get through this, all right? So uh, uh, let's get in to some uh, movie news. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch you up on what's been going on in the week, some of the exciting things that have been coming out and kind of uh, get you all caught up. So let's pop it, lock it, butter it down. All right, moving on here. Creed 3 will star YouTube and TikTok stars. Now, the character Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan, uh, will teach Jake Paul and Bryce Hall how to box. Now, we already know Jake Paul has had a lot of uh, fake boxing practice. You can take last weekend as an example of this. So he has that experience needed. Um, I think this is a really cool change because we've seen Adonis Creed you know, overcome all these battles in these individual matches. But can he coach? You know, can he take on that kind of Sylvester Stallone Rocky mentality? You know, there's uh, uh, rumors that there might be kind of like a warrior situation where Jake Paul is going to fight Logan Paul and and he's going to coach Jake on how to beat his older and stronger brother. Uh, so th- it's a really exciting uh, change to the movies. But what gets my imagination going more is, is all the other uh, influencers that might appear. And... Uh, you know, I'm I'm ready for some surprise cameos. Dixie D'Amelio, you know, <laughs> you know, if, if, if she could be in the movie, wouldn't that be fun, right? We get Dixie in there, Michael B. Jordan. P- please make that happen. Please, I can't keep watching Attaway General. Please get her in the movie, <laughs> okay? Please. Moving on, the Flash solo film has finally started filming. Now, if you don't know about the Flash solo film, this thing has it's been shopped around Hollywood a hundred times with writers and directors constantly changes. I've used the, heard the word revolving door of like writers and directors coming in and out of this. Um, so it's it's great that it's finally off the ground. We don't know too much. I, I've seen some set photos and uh, Flash's costume looks great. Um, um, Ezra Miller choking his fellow co-stars I think is a cool touch. Uh, it's kind of what you expect when you work with him. I remember we heard a lot about a... Uh, Henry Cavill just getting, you know, having having welts on his necks from uh, the the fun, playful choking that Ezra Miller does to everyone. 
Um, we also got set photos of Zack Snyder trying to walk on set. He, Zack Snyder was trying to sneak on there to be like, hey, you know, um, Ezra, be more over the top with your awkwardness, you know, and he, he kept fighting and he kept throwing hot dogs at Ezra and was like, hey, use these hot dogs, Ezra, throw them in the air, throw the hot dogs. And it was, it was a little odd. Security did end up getting him out of there, but not before he was able to go up and uh, try to fiddle with the camera to get it to a 4-3 aspect ratio. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting. Uh, it sounds more like we're hearing about the drama of this movie than we are actually the story beat. Um, but, yeah, yeah I, I think it could be interesting. Uh, they have said that they are going to shoot the thing entirely in slow motion. So I think that's a good change, too, because that does keep with the spirit of the abysmal Snyderverse. But, you know... At least stay consistent with the character, right? Moving on. Ryan Johnson will be the showrunner for The Mandalorian Season 4. Now, this is coming off the news that he will be replacing Dave Filoni after he's finished with the third season. Now, from what we're hearing, Kathleen Kennedy, the president of Lucasfilm, is, is really tired of Baby Yoda and all the fan service and is wanting to breathe new life into the show. So, um... Yeah, I think this is a really interesting change. David Filoni has already promised that season three is going to have a, a phenomenal cliffhanger. Um, and then Ryan Johnson has promised to say fuck you and throw that cliffhanger right in the garbage with episode one. Uh, he might even do it in a title scroll. We might not even see what the, what the unresolved issue is. Um, I'm hoping we get a little time jump where we see Luke Skywalker decide to isolate himself on the that island. So we're able to get that character depth uh, that fans will ultimately see as a threat to their childhood. I, I remember my dad always saying uh, after he watched Return of the Jedi, he's like, will Luke become a hermit? That was something he was always so wondering about, and, and it's great that Ryan Johnson's going to be doing that. Uh, Ryan Johnson has just taken to Twitter and is just saying fuck you to everyone, doing middle finger emojis. And I think that's just, I think that's great. You know, that is the new direction Star Wars needs to go, you know? Uh, dick out balls to the wall saying fuck you i personally as someone who has 12 different fake reddit accounts i'm excited you know i'm ready for the toxicity uh the fan base was getting too united we need to divide these guys up you know let's get a star wars civil war brewing you know let's get that back going so ryan we missed you moving on here paramount plus has announced a new adult series titled love spongebob uh this will center around spongebob squarepants in his later years where he struggles with life as an openly gay sponge. Now, it, it, you're thinking years down the line, he's actually in a relationship, a partnership with uh, Squidward Tentacles. One of the issues that SpongeBob is going to be dealing with, it's going to be a much more mature show, is that Squidward, uh, despite them having been uh, partners for two years, still isn't comfortable calling SpongeBob his, his, his boyfriend or uh, won't even hold a sponge hand to tentacle when they're walking around uh, jellyfish fields. And uh, they, they are dealing with workplace harassment from their boss, who's uh, Mr. Krabs, who's, who's revealed to be a strict Orthodox Protestant, and kind of his subplot about him struggling with his own sexuality as he reckons with uh, having had a, a gay relationship with a bearish whale uh, in the Navy. So, uh, which possibly will lead to why he adopted Pearl in the first place. So it, it's just, there's a lot of themes going on in this. It's all going to be very tasteful, and it's going to be a great exploration of sexuality. Um, Patrick Starr is going to be asexual. Uh, Sandy is pansexual. And that kind of, like, opposites attract friendship sort of thing is, you know, odd couple. I think it's going to be fantastic. I think this is a, it's, it's a great way to explore these themes um, with characters that we're very familiar with. Uh, Clancy Brown, who plays Mr. Krabs, has already come out on record. He says it's one of the most challenging roles he's ever experienced. And it, it cost him to self-examine a lot about his own sexuality um, and, and just just his thoughts on uh, the world at large. Uh, whereas Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob, has said, uh, just give me the bag and I'll say whatever the fuck you want. Um, Tommy K, don't give a shit. Uh, so ends of the spectrum there. Uh, Nickelodeon executives have already come out saying that we know Steven Hillenburg would have loved this. They know that Steven Hillenburg, the creator of SpongeBob, this is this is ultimately his vision. I gotta say, I'm excited for this. I can already see the emotional beats. Uh, it's gonna be a tearjerker. It's gonna be tough, but essential. I actually recommend that families watch this together. You, you know, it's 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 weird because it's 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 a family style cartoon show, but now it's a family must watch cartoon show. We'll see how it goes. Nickelodeon, you have my full support on this one, okay? All righty, we're going to go on a quick break here, uh, but when we're back, we'll have quick reviews for you. Stick around. 
Hey everyone, I, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. We just actually want to take this break for a second uh, to show you about some exciting stuff. Now, you may have been watching the episode and noticed this pin right here. And the pin says, I risked my life for tenant. And when I got this pin from redbubble.com, which is actually where you can find all of our merch, um, this right here is a kind of like signed contract, a sort of a, a statement right here that I risked my life during the middle of a global pandemic to see a masterpiece film. And I actually did that multiple times. And I think something at the kernel we've been talking about is since we're all such huge fans that this is a kind of a badge of honor a badge of courage if you will so we're actually selling these uh on redbubble um these i risk my life for tenant pins you can get them as stickers like this a more a larger sticker you put kind of on a laptop screen maybe you put it in the corner of your screen so when you're watching tenant for your what 17th time uh you get a reminder that you actually braved the perils of the world to see this film and promote really high quality filmmaking so if you want to uh get these check them out at redbubble.com we actually have a bunch of great uh merch over there uh we also have uh this great uh sticker written and directed by quintifer nolentino uh this is if you want to flex on some film fans and let them know that you're you're a fan of great writing and film and you're also a fan of great writing and great directing in film so kind of uh, uh to show that you really appreciate true cinema we also have this great one right here that i think is awesome i think this is this is uh, uh it's god king nolan but i think this is during while he's filming the prestige if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, this is the prestige Nolan right here. So you can wear this and just kind of show your your support of a really true visionary that Christopher Nolan is. And then finally, we have just a standard, the Colonel News kind of sticker you can put um, on like a laptop screen. And this right here actually works in film debates as sort of a get out of jail free for a bad take. Uh, if you feel like you have something controversial, you just take this sticker off, you show it to someone and they know, you know, that it, it's kind of just, hey, don't debate me. All right, don't try to fight me on this. I'm going to beat you. Uh, I do want to make it clear. If you if you do end up purchasing the I Risk My Life for Tenet sticker, you have to have seen Tenet in theaters. This is a club that we want exclusivity for. Uh, we want it to be a, 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 a badge of courage. You wouldn't you wouldn't wear a purple heart, you know, just because you fought in the war, right? You, you want this to mean something. So please only buy the Iris for my life for Tenant if you truly did see Tenant in theaters, you know? And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, we're going to be moving on to our quick reviews here. So here's some quick reviews about uh, uh, movies, ta uh, TV shows, trailers, anything that's come out during the week uh, that I want to catch you up on, all right? Maybe you'll listen to this and go, ooh, I don't want to check that out. Or maybe you go, wow, that's a must-see. All right, so our first review the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Season 1, Episodes 4 through 6. The finale. I will keep spoilers to a minimum. It's going to be really tough, but I will. Uh, but but when John Walker pushed wheelchair-bound Steve Rogers off of the sword Hella character, my jaw hit the floor. First of all, because that we found out Steve Rogers was still alive. Secondly, that we found out he was alive just so John Walker could kill him. N that is phenomenal storytelling and i loved how when he saw him they played this they played the song as he's getting shoved off the helicopter they played his dancing song with peggy i thought that was powerful because it's kind of an ironic twist on it right um but no spoilers okay i'll i won't spoil it um also i want to say i've gotten a lot of um a ton of wonderful fan mail since the last episode uh just so many people understanding my situation with my grandma and, and giving me advice if you don't know, my grandma's a huge Marvel head. In last episode, I was kind of forced to talk about the problems I had with WandaVision while knowing my grandma could likely disown me and take away all of my uh, enormous trust money that she's accumulated uh, for me. Um, but my grandma finally did call me back, and she forgives me for not liking WandaVision. I was so relieved uh, to hear that. Um, then we just started talking about, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale and how we couldn't believe that, uh, a young Thanos showed up at the end and summoned Mephisto and Galactus and it was wonderful. It was, um, if you're lucky enough to have one, go give your grandma a call. Okay. Uh, moving on here. Thunder Force 2021. It was shit. Okay, moving on here, Mortal Kombat 2021. Uh, I saw this in the theater. A, a great theater experience. Let's start there. Great theater. Glad to be back. I felt like I was in the action. Uh, but I did have one gripe. I couldn't find the controllers to play as the characters. 
Um, I was looking around my seat the whole time trying to find it. You know, I was like, oh my God, is, is it going to be a Switch controller? Or is it going to be an Xbox 360? It looked PlayStation 5 from the from the quality of it. So, I was, But I couldn't find a controller for it. And since there's, you know, COVID regulations, I couldn't ask anyone sitting next to me. We're all socially distanced out. But but I, I, I do think I actually did do a fatality once. It was, it was Sub-Zero versus Scorpion, and Sub-Zero bashes Scorpion through uh, Ice Wall. And I, I think that might have been because I did, I, I, in my seat, I did kind of like a bounce, bounce, left, right. You see that bounce, bounce, left, right. So if you want to unlock that uh, scene again, um, it, it, make sure to do bounce, bounce, left, right. You're controlling Sub-Zero in that scene, all right? And I know you're going to say, Noah... You missed out on key scenes. You should have been paying attention the whole time. It's Mortal Kombat, okay? This isn't Tenet. Yeah, it's very middle of the road. Uh, three out of five on my letterboxed. Might have been four out of five, but I just couldn't figure out those fatalities. Moving on. Okay, so now we're entering our Did You Know section. Now, this is a deep dive into film knowledge and trivia that you won't find on IMDb, okay? So, did you know Chris Evans slept with your mom? Yes, you. You, the one watching this video. Chris Evans slept with your mom. And then he took her to Denny's after. And he told me about it, and he said, I got her her second Grand Slam of the day. She'd been walking different. You noticed it. You didn't think anything of it. And the reason why is because Captain America... That's sex with your mom. Your dad watched. Uh, thanks, everyone. As always, I'm Noah Norton. Uh, go check us out on Instagram. Go check us out on TikTok. Uh, we also have another YouTube channel, uh, The Colonel Highlights. So if you want it in a little shorter form rather than these lengthy podcast episodes, go check us out there. Uh, and as always, have a good one.